everyone, it's Julia. I have a great project today. I have been collecting keys for many years and I have I have a whole drawer full of old keys. Now I'm not talking the vin the really old skeleton keys or the hollow keys. I have a lot of those too, but I don't use those for this project. But these are just old interesting keys. Some of them are car keys, some of them open old houses or whatever and they, and they all have different shapes and different sizes and I have been making these tassel pendants I really love them they add like a, a pop of color to a plain kind of t-shirt or, sh or whatever shirt you're wearing they're they're all longer chains so they kind of hang down a little ways and they've just been a lot of fun now the key itself is the the tassel is on the bottom of the key or the top of the key I guess and then and then I actually do a, a little wrap going up and I'm going to show you in this video how how I make these how I paint them how I wire wrap them I have just been selling these at my little summer shop and they've been going like crazy um, and I think it's because they're, the price is good and also they just, they're just like a really easy accessory. And what a conversation piece, right? So I'm just adding these to my Etsy shop and I thought I would show you, show, just kind of show you what they look like and also the easy steps in making them. The first step in making the keys is to add the color. And I'm using the Bettinas by Ranger, the Bettinas for, for metal. I'm using if this, this, the, these particular keys, I'm using Ruby, Rust, and the color um, Opalite. I use a little makeup sponge, and this is just a piece of one. I've already trimmed, trimmed part of it off. I like to start with one of the colors, just by putting a couple dots on my sponge, and then just dotting it onto the key. leaving some of the spaces and then adding another color. These paints are very opaque. They cover really well. And they also dry very, very quickly. One last color. And almost as quick as you put it on, they're dry, and you can flip them over and do the other side. And I'll be doing exactly the same thing, just using the same sponge and, and dab, dabbing on the colors. When both sides are, are dry, I like to take a little file, or I have a file here. I also have just like a little emery kind of a nail thing here and I like to go and just kind of take some of the some of the paint off especially if the key has some interesting markings on it for instance this one just has a little bit of a filigree and a, and a number that's that is just really kind of cool The final step in the key preparation is to put the glaze on and this is the glaze that comes with the the paint the paints and it's just called gloss and it's like a metal sealer and patina extender and what I'm going to do with this is again put it on a on a um, my little makeup sponge just going to be cutting this part away that's already been used and just dabbing this on. And this takes a little bit longer to dry, but as soon as one side is dry, I'm going to put, I'm just gonna flip these over. And this just kind of protects the, the paint and gives it a nice shine. I'm gathering some of my fibers and, and textiles for the fringe. And kind of the things I look for is just a variety of different um, textures. Some are wool, some are just more fringy. 
and different colors. I also like different diameters. So some that are really skinny, some that are more like a, just like a ribbon. This is like a, a silk ribbon. So just a variety. I also use some, some fabrics. I do like using the fab, the batik fabrics that are the same on both sides. And when I use these, I just start just by making a little slit and then just, just tearing all the way down. Another fabric that I like to use is just a, a regular muslin that just to kind of give it a, a creamy look. And again, I just I just tear strips in about a half inch um, wide. It's on to wire wrapping the keys. Now, just a disclaimer, I'm not a jeweler, I, and I just kind of do this by trial and error. And every key is different. It's shaped differently, it's different lengths, it has different notches in them. And so each one is going to be a little bit different, and it's, again, it's kind of a trial and error thing. But some of the things that I used to do the wire wrapping, I do use a round nose plier, a chain nose, and also just some kind of cutter. This is a side cutter. I like to add a bead to it. And for these, this batch of keys that I've been working on, I've been, I've been adding a, a handcrafted paper bead that I had picked up at a, at a craft show. And it's this sweet gal was selling these and I just think they're so interesting. And so I'm gonna be adding one of those. I do use two different types of wire. I use a 22 gauge. And then I also use, a, I think this is maybe like a 28 gauge, it's really thin. And they, I happened to have picked these up many, many years ago and I had them in my stash and there's several different colors, just kind of on these little bobbins. And so I use, I use some of that and I'm gonna just kind of show you how I do it. And like I said, this is probably not the correct way, but it just kind of worked for me. I take the 22 gauge wire first of all and I and I I cut about probably about like a 10 inch to begin with I spiral one end I just by taking my my round nose and kind of forming a little circle on one end and then taking my chain nose and just forming a little a little end here or a little circle. That kind of hides the end and just makes it so it's not sharp and then adds a little decorative touch to it also. When I have that complete, I take my key, kind of decide which side I want and I put, I put the little spiral on the front of the key, kind of towards the bottom. And I hold it in place with a chain nose pliers on my, my, not my working hand. So I'm left-handed, so this is going to be going in my right hand. So I have my left hand free to, to do the wrapping. And I just start wrapping. And I kind of go in these little notches that the key normally has and just kind of hold it tight and wrap it tight. To add the little bead then, I just kind of place it on while I'm wrapping it up here, placing it on the end of the wire and just kind of laying it in place and continuing to wrap. When I get almost to the top, on the back side of the wire, I'm just going to point this straight up at a 45 degree angle. So this is going to be kind of loose back here and that's where the, the thinner wire is going to come into play in just a little bit here. Holding this wire in place, I'm going to be taking this, my round nose again and forming the loop on the top just by forming this wire, bending it back on back over, bringing it around and then wrapping this wire around the base of this little loop here. I'm kind of just straightening this up. 
And so now what I have, I have a tail here, but I also have this loop on the top, and then it's, and it, like I said, it's kind of, it's loose right now. On this tail, I'm going to again just form a loop and spiral it back on. Once my spiral is formed, I just, I'm just going to bend that to the front. It just kind of acts as the decoration. It's onto my little wire now, and I've decided to go with this gold color, kind of like a mustard color. I'm starting it in the back and just kind of putting it behind some of these wires, just to kind of give it a, a, a landing point to begin here. Holding that, and then I'm just starting to wrap. And what I want to make sure is wrapping it several times around the top here, where I have that loose kind of wire in the back, just to keep that secure. And I don't mind if it goes over the top of the spiral. Sometimes I'll go underneath the bead. Sometimes I'll go on top of the bead. It just kind of depends upon how it's kind of falling into place here. And then wrapping it down. I'm going to cut this wire so it has a little tail too. And I'm also going to just do a spiral on that. And then I've just placed that spiral somewhere on the, in the, on the front. This one happens to be land right above the bottom spiral. And now on the back, I have my little loop that is secure with the smaller wire. Making sure that this back wire too, this tiny wire, wherever the end is, that it's, that it's not going to interfere with the neckline at all in the shirt. So that it's, there's no rough edges, basically. And then it's on to putting the tassel on. I have chosen several pieces here of my fiber and my yarns. I cut them at about 12 inches. Every key is different and some keys have a smaller hole than others at the bottom. So you kind of have to be mindful of that and, and how thick you're going to get this. I fold it in half and I start from the back side of my key and I poke it through. This key has so many interesting holes in the bottom. This would be fun to even hang a dangle on one of these other, other little holes. This part may get a little tricky. Sometimes I do use a little needle to kind of poke it through. This is actually a darning needle, so it's, it's blunt on one end. But some, something to kind of help poke this through. it's through I have a loop on this end and I then have my tail on this one and I'm just going to wrap the tails through the loop and pull it tight and then just kind of work it so that it's somewhat even and everything is pulled through and tight the way you want it and there I have my tail I like to trim this so they're all about the same same length now is to add your ball chain or whatever chain that you want to use and I just cut like a 30 inch piece and it does have the clasp on one end the ball chain is real easy to cut to whatever length so if this is a little bit long you can just use a kitchen scissor to cut it down and that is it this was an easy project And there it is. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a chance to create today. Thanks so much. Bye.